market market market, <laughs> market crash. But actually, what's wrong with that? Market 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 uh, market. <laughs> <laughs> So Kelvin, welcome back to the channel. How has life been after one year since we met? So this year, I'm sure everyone's portfolio is red, uh, super red, especially if you're all in into Tesla. <laughs> but, but to answer your question, I think uh, my life outside of investing, I think it has been great. This year is my second year going full-time into YouTube. Mm. So uh, I get to meet more people, uh, like the Scythe boss, Endowers boss, mm. Dollars and Cents boss, Silly boss. Uh, going around to meet bosses like to make co new connections then my kid my kid has also went to uh, her preschool uh, somewhere in this year so i think i think it's like a bittersweet moment like, uh -huh. like your kid has like ooh leaving the nest already the first step <laughs> so but i'm proud like, i'm proud that, <laughs> that i didn't you know the kid is still alive <laughs> 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 that's an achievement yeah. uh, so i think overall it's good la. so i uh, intend to continue on this kind of mm. Good and good, uh, and the bad. Hopefully, the stocks will go back up next year, lah. Yeah, I'm also quite surprised that you you can get so many bosses on your on your channel. I I feel it's very good learning from all these entrepreneurs and leaders, um, in the finance space, lah. So if you haven't checked out his interview videos, go and check it out. Kelvin learns investing. But one thing, ah, do you grow more white hair, ah? Because I see, wow, <laughs> one whole head already now. <laughs> I I think it's like if if you invest in my hair. It has gone up like hundred percent year over year. Hundred <laughs> percent year on year growth. I, I, here's the thing, right? I, I think it's a factor of a few things. Is first is the stress. Uh, right now I'm working like eighty hours a week. It still eighty hours after still one year. Still eighty hours even after hiring an editor. Okay. Mm, I intend to go a bit slower next year, so hopefully the the, the black hairs will come back soon, lah. Huh? Okay. Uh, I also believe it's, it's uh, genetics. La. It's mm. not possible to have so many white hairs, right? Elon Musk was also working more than me. And he, I don't see him he, he having so many he white hairs. He used to be bored, you know? <laughs> a bit bored. In fact, he, his hair actually grew more after he worked. Yeah. So I think it depends from person to person. La. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start with the confronting question on his investment portfolio. Very fierce one. La. So last year, you told me that you were more than 80% in Tesla. <laughs> and this year, Indeed, the markets have fallen and a lot of people have unrealized losses, massive losses in Tesla. Mm. So, what do you do about it and has your investment strategy or portfolio allocation actually changed over the year? So, to be more specific, last year, my Tesla allocation was 85%. Mm. Then, after this drop, uh, the Tesla allocation dropped to 70%. Uh, it's not because I sell. Uh. Some, there were rumors that I was selling. I didn't sell. I was, I'm still holding. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing about my investing strategy. It changes uh, over, uh, over every few years. When first, I started with dividend investing. I was investing in Singapore stocks, uh, dividend stocks. Then I went into index fund investing. Then when I saw it was too slow, I jumped into investing in Tesla. Mm. Then now I realized that after speaking to a lot of people, uh, like the work salary man uh, and Dawes boss, uh, even the Dr. Wealth, the Alwyn Dr. Wealth, they were all doing uh, very diversified portfolios. So one thing is very clear here, either they are wrong in their mm. investing strategy or I'm wrong in my investing strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after, after this whole year of uh, meeting up with different people and talking to them, I realized that maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually don't have to expose myself to this kind of heavy concentration risk. La. So that's why I'm slowly trying to reduce my Tesla allocation. La. Not selling mm. Tesla, reduce my Tesla all allocation down to 20%. So in the end, my eventual goal is to have a very diversified portfolio of maybe five to six stocks. That's my next goal for now. Mm. So um, has, have I lost money in Tesla? Surprisingly, no. La. Because uh, when since the start of this year, I've been investing lesser amounts into Tesla and started buying into other stocks like Apple, Microsoft, oh. Amazon, this kind. Uh, and because I bought quite early on in 2020, uh, my average cost for, te for Tesla was around 220 only. Around there, la. I don't remember the exact amount. So even though it has dropped by 50%, right? I'm, ne I was, I'm just around like negative 15% loss. Mm. And because I'm selling options on my Tesla, <laughs> all the options gains have covered the loss, la, but I didn't just add it in. La. So for now, maybe my Tesla loss is just negative 15%. Negative 15%. Yeah. Okay. But it's okay. Right? Yeah, Tesla yeah. long term is, I, I, I don't see it going down 
long over the long term, like because they are still a growing company. Yeah, and also the other thing is yeah, because you were quite an early investor in Tesla in mm-hmm. 2020, considered early, uh, before the, the run up hype. Yeah, yeah. So that, that may have cushioned a lot of that impact. Yeah. But for people between that 2021 and 2022, maybe they suffered like so much more than. And, and, and just to add on, even if you are suffering now, I did a valuation last week on Tesla, like what's the stock price by 2030. Uh, on a very bearish case, right? even uh, assuming that Tesla does not have a robot taxi insurance business, is not picking up, all the solar thing is not doing well, they have lowered their car mm. costs, everything, right? The Tesla stock price at that time will still be around $600. Even factory in like lower PE, uh, selling lesser cars, mm. everything. Like, so long term wise, uh, I'm still bullish on Tesla. That's good. <laughs> That's a summary. <laughs> so if you all want to have the answer whether Kelvin is still bullish on Tesla, here it is. He is still keeping his Tesla, never sold any shares. In fact, earn a bit on options as well. Oh, uh, I just want to add on. The reason I want to reduce my Tesla allocation is because like, okay, the purpose of this whole investing is just to, for me to achieve fire within five years. Right? Mm. That's my goal. So if Tesla were to go down o- o- in the short term, then I will miss my goal. Yeah. Uh, especially if there's weird stuff like Elon Musk tilting stupid stuff. La. I just want to diversify away my risk uh, and rely more on my day job rather than on my portfolio. Mm. Long term wise, I don't, I don't see any problem with Tesla. It's just, it's just a short term. I see a lot of uh, volatility risk for Tesla. Yeah. That's why I'm just reducing this thing. Yeah, great answer. So hope it answers some of your uncertainty about Tesla and whether <laughs> Kelvin is still holding to them. Okay, but one more important question is that in the earlier part of this year, we saw Chicken Genius from a Tesla Big Bull switch to a Tesla Big Bear and even shorted his Tesla position. So when he done that move, did it really affect you mentally and change your conviction about Tesla? To, to say that he did not affect me would be a lie. Because like, I'm sure for many Singaporeans, they invested in Tesla was because of him, including Palantir, Nano, mm. uh, and all the ArcG stuff, right? Uh, so he, I think he's, he has definitely played a big part in me going almost all in into yeah. Tesla. So when he pulled out, right, I, I, I didn't reduce my allocation mm. because of my chicken genius, but he just gave me the uh, additional push for me to reduce the uh, portfolio risk, uh. portfolio concentration risk, la. because uh, that's, that's like, like what he said, like, in the short term, Tesla is, will face a lot of volatility risk, long term wise, still bullish. So the original purpose is just for me to reduce my risk. Then when Chicken Genius did the same thing, I like, ah, <laughs> I was right. <laughs> so uh, he did play a part, but not the, he, was, he wasn't the main factor for me to reduce my allocation risk. La. Mm. Yeah. But I would say it's, it's quite a significant thing, right? Because it's one of the biggest voices of Tesla. And mm. I believe a lot of Singaporean finance YouTubers also centered their YouTube channels around Tesla. And yeah, the, the, the mood or the hype has gone down quite a bit on that. But I, I would say that he, for Chicken Genius to turn into a bear right now is actually a good thing. Because mm. as a Tesla bull, he will give you different viewpoints than what you believe all yeah. along, right? Uh, Tesla is this company that will dominate the world. <laughs> this kind of, I would say, stupid, stupid kind of uh, echo chamber. La. So if he's giving you this kind of criticism, you should just take into account what he said, whether it's true or not, then factor it in, in into your investment thesis. Yeah. I'd rather him become a Tesla bear to give me, to give me different viewpoints yeah. rather than keep him keep pumping up Tesla stock. Yeah. That's, that, that's what I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> Ho ho ho, it's Merry Christmas soon and Weibo is spreading its love by giving 150 US dollars worth of cash voucher especially during this promotional period till 31st December. So when you sign up for Weibo account and make your first deposit of at least 2000 Singapore dollars then you can make a one buy order. This order will need to be a minimum of 100 USD. I mean you can look at AAPL Apple stock because one share of Apple is around 150 US dollars. Next you also have to make one options trade so I would suggest that you buy one put option of Apple at $70 expiring the nearest date which is this Friday and that will be at 1 cent right so 100 units of that will be just $1 expense. After that make sure that you hold your deposits for at least 30 days until your cash voucher is credited so don't need to worry about whether your stock value will fluctuate up or down because as long as you have not made any cash withdrawals your reward eligibility is still valid. So sign up for a WeWo account using my referral link down below or scan a QR code right here and hope you have enjoyed a Merry Christmas.
Okay, so that's for the current market outlook. How about your future market outlook? Okay, let's say in 2023, and there have been a lot of bearish news about recession, about unemployment. How are you going to invest in the coming year? First, I want to reduce my allocation risk by diversifying around uh, tech stocks. That's my first, first thing to do. Then, at the same time, I'm also investing... Okay, here's the thing about opening a company. Eh? At the end of the year, you can actually declare dividend to yourself. Mm -hmm. So I declare this huge pile of cash, not huge, uh, a little bit of cash <laughs> to myself. So this pile of cash, I'm trying to throw into Singapore Savings Bond for now. Mm. Uh, then when the chance comes, I will start, start taking out uh, every month one by one to throw into the market. So uh, that's my thing. First is to reduce and diversify. Second is to throw into bonds to capture all the high interest mm. rate for now, lock in for 10 years. Then if the market starts to go back out, I will start liquidating all my bonds to throw into the stock market. Otherwise, it will keep interest, earning uh, around 3.5% 3 3 interest for the next 10 years. Though. Yeah, so you say you are venturing into non-tech stocks. Any specific stocks or companies that are capturing your interest as of the current market? Not yet. Like, actually, I haven't looked into non-tech stocks. Oh. <laughs> so for now, it's just tech stocks. Uh, because long term wise, I still see a growth opportunity for tech stocks. Like, okay, Apple is coming out with their own maybe car. Mm. Not even car, maybe it's the just, just the dashboard. La. That, but then it will already ha capture a huge market in the EV space already. Uh, Microsoft, Amazon, they've gone down quite a bit. Mm. It means it's, bug, it's a good Singapore, uh, Singapore sale for me. <laughs> uh, so I will keep buying all these kind of stocks. Once I've hit my allocation of like a balanced allocation uh, for all the stocks, then I will only start looking on how to improve my portfolio further. Mm. So, okay. And also because I'm trying to gain a hundred stocks for each share so that I can start selling options on them. Okay. So for example, Microsoft is giving me about 100 to 200 dollars a month kind of options income. So all of the stock I'm aiming for at least a hundred plus to give me a passive income, more or less passive. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> then once I've reached that, then I will see what's next to go. Lor. Yeah, that's a that's a group move. Okay, let's talk about something more personal and general, right? So this whole year in 2022, what was the best event, best idea, or best thing that happened to you um, that you wish to sh share and hope that more people can benefit from it? Wow, actually, it's, it doesn't benefit anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a collective of stuff, like There's no one best that stand out. Mm. Because to be frank, like, like you see my hair, this year has been super stressful for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first was the kid. Yeah, yeah I, I, like I said earlier, like, it's a big accomplishment that the kid is still alive. Uh. Like, I, I don't even believe that <laughs> I'm fit to be a father. Okay. Um, then the second one is I've been managed to con connect to a lot of different people, uh, all the bosses, like, all the big players in the in finance industry. And I even got invited to talk at Nanyang Poly the other day. Talk called like. Uh, so, but talk about what? Though? How I started as a YouTuber. Uh, okay. <laughs> so hopefully they find it useful, uh, So all, all these small thing events add up to a summary of me mm. for this year, lor. There's no big events like I, I like I don't have a new kid. I didn't upgrade to a new house. <laughs> so, but all these small things just make this year a bit more memorable, uh. Yeah. How about the worst thing then? That <laughs> you hope that it won't happen again. Hope that it won't happen again. So, uh, it's, it, it has to do with YouTube, like, the whole holder knot thing. Yeah, so let's address this about <laughs> the holder knot. <laughs> so this whole holder knot thing, I was, last year I was telling people, okay, you can, if you're okay with the, with the risk, you can put it into holder knot. So, and that's what I did for myself. And that's why I recommended people to try out if they're okay with the risk. Like. And when I saw news that, uh, rumors that holder knot was collapsing, I was, I, I put it out. I posted on my YouTube community. Mm. I also told you to post it on your YouTube community, right? Yeah, so I would just <laughs> want to interject here. Uh. I invested in Holdenop because of I watched Kelvin's video. <laughs> and then I pulled out of Holdenop because I saw Kelvin's message that Holdenop is has yeah. something suspicious. So whatever I did with Holdenop uh, is really under his influence and I will never blame him for it, you know, because that was my decision to put money inside and my decision to take money outside. So sometimes when you put faith into a platform, uh, you also have to challenge your own belief and see whether all these things are still valid at that point in time. And that's what I did. Mm. So like, okay, that's the biggest mistake I did. Uh, not, about, not about investing with Hold or Not, about posting that thing through YouTube posts. Because that thing is a bit like Facebook. One. It has a mm. 
it had reached a certain people, right? Then it stopped. Then it stopped spreading already. <laughs> so not everyone saw that message. Uh, and, and as a result, many people got burned. Lah. So I think there's a big lesson for me. Lah. Uh, I, I, even though it, it's like you say that I, I'm not responsible, right? I do feel responsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, because without me, right, pe- these kind of people wouldn't have invested into Holden Not. <laughs> yeah. and, and I... So that made me... I had two decisions. The first one is to stop promoting crypto platforms. Uh, crypto, crypto exchange, I will, still, I will still talk about it because people are still going to talk. I'm still yes. going to buy crypto money. Where else are they going to uh, buy crypto? So I will still talk about it. So the other ones like Cake, Nexo, uh, Hodler, I don't know, are they, they are still around. Maybe some, some of them are still around. <laughs> I, I already removed the link to my oh. platform because if I want to become this go-to channel for Singaporeans, right? I need to be at least, don't talk about all the dangerous mm. stuff, la. be the, that figure kind of person. La. To, to, so, so I, I think it's a good learning, learning lesson for all of us. First, for the viewers, don't just trust what I say, la. just verify yourself. La. Not and, financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, even if it's financial advice, okay, here's the thing, la. whatever I say on my channel, I do mean it in a good way. Yeah. And money is always secondary because reputation is worth a lot more than the money that I earn. And if I want to earn money, I have a lot of ways other than just these kind of crypto platforms. Lah. So <laughs> people, because people were saying that I like, oh, you promote my, uh, hold or not uh, FTS because of money. It's not because of money at all. <laughs> so it's, it's because people, it's because I was using it. That's why I just promote it. Lah. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. Don't just trust anyone who says it because I may be wrong. If the market may be wrong, Mm. Uh, even that GIC also wrong they, they invested in this in this Genesis thing and Genesis collapsed <laughs> so that's the first thing the second thing for me is stop promoting this kind of risky stuff la. like I can do it in private uh, but I won't promote it, promote it anymore la. Mm. so that's that's my thing yeah so building up on this crypto thing right one other thing is FTX mm. and FTX has been heavily promoted by some of the largest finance content creators in the US space we are talking about Graham Stephan, Andre Jake and Mick Kevin this kind and they have been heavily shot and flimmed on their channels right because they were promoting this scam this criminal platform a lot of users are affected some of the users are also based in Singapore as well and some of them were influenced by you and me so my question will be what is the level of responsibility that content creators should hold when they are discussing about all these good deals all these platforms especially in the investment world and the crypto world what is the level of responsibility that we hold so i was talking to this boss uh timothy from dollars and cents like his team uh, his dollars and cents boss mm. <laughs> he said that he don't promote crypto it's because he don't really understand that whole platform like and i think he made the right move here so for for me personally i i still intend to talk about crypto platforms because it's something that people want to learn how to buy without it they will still have to they are still going to find ways to buy crypto platform mm. uh, buy cryptos elsewhere lah. so i want to be the one talking about it to uh, give people at least i uh, hope to give good advice yeah. on how to use crypto platforms lah. so then for lending platforms now that we all know that it's clear that all these platforms are not sustainable then it's better not to talk about it <laughs> so for me i have two rules now one if it's not regulated right i wouldn't even touch it already mm. so for like things like Weibo, Moomoo even if they fail, right, there's, there's a fail safe of, uh, in terms of insurance, in terms of segregated accounts. Even if they fail, users will still be safe. Th- there's no problem there. Then for crypto platforms, if it fails, it really fails that <laughs> people will lose a lot of money. Yeah. So uh, I'll was, I was stop talk, talking about that. Long. Okay, now let's talk about haters, right? Kelvin has a lot of fan base, over 80,000 people following him. And you see, with a larger fan base, your amount of haters would grow as well. Mm. And I've seen some negativity posts um, on online forums, on chat groups, and even on social media platforms like TikTok, um, discussing about you and your actions and all that. So how are you managing amid all this negativity of content created around you? Managing, I think, uh, okay, at first I was a bit depressed. Then I was numb to it already. Right now I'm numb to it already. <laughs> uh, and I realized that, okay, hater fan base, they are actually good to me in some ways because they point out where I'm wrong. So as long as you have, as long as people have different views from you on the internet, right? They will point out to you already. 
Uh. Like, um, okay, this guy, this Xiaomi is investing 80% into Tesla. So, one of the real points has to be right, right? Either he's right that I'm too risky, or, I, or I'm right that, I, that this is a good investment. Lah. So, that gives me uh, things to look into. Lah. I'd rather people tell me that I'm wrong <laughs> than, than tell me that, oh, you're right, you're all right all the time, thank you for all these good, good advices. Without this hater fan base, right, I will never grow. Uh. So, even for this crypto thing, it made me realize that I have a big responsibility to play, even though it's just Kelvin does investing. <laughs> Uh, in, in fact, right, uh, it gives me, it tells me to be a bit more mature in what I have to say. Yeah. So, um, header fan base, they will always be there. La, right? it's, it's like, it's like uh, day and night kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you can't escape from it. As long as you have a uh, fan base, you definitely have a hater fan base. And how you react to this hater fan base will determine how you grow as a creator. Mm. So, for me, I use it as a way to improve myself. Lo. But let's address one of the constructive feedback or hater comment, uh, which is they are always targeting your pronunciation uh, of English words. So are you doing anything to improve or th- on it? Wow, uh, this one I, I I see almost every video. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> can we, so so two years ago I was talking super fast. It's because I was reading the script from the monitor. Then I was yeah. then I was turn around and look at the camera. Yeah. So people tell me to s- slow down. Uh, I did. I did slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so then the other one is your pronunciation is very hard to understand. Then I suspect it's because I w- I'm still talking too fast that I'm skipping out some syllables. So now I'm trying to speak a bit slower, lor, so that people will understand my English, lah. But I don't know. What? How? How can I improve? Uh? Oh, I saw some examples. Uh. one one is your own name. Instead of Kelvin, is Kelvin here, <laughs> <laughs> and then ma- market market. market. Mar- market crash. But actually, what's wrong with that? Market. 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 Uh, market. <laughs> <laughs> Live English lesson. <laughs> but, but anyway, if there are a few pronunciations that you hope Kelvin can improve on, just tell him specific what are the words yeah. in the comment. Uh, instead of spreading like your pronunciation sucks and you need to improve your English <laughs> and all that. I think it's more important to help him than to criticize. Law. See uh, how he can improve. At, at one point in time, I was actually thinking of going for classes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I changed my mind because I don't have time this year. So maybe next year, if my pronunciation still haven't improved, right, I will consider going for classes already. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's how I'm planning to improve. Yeah, he's working on it. I'll give him some <laughs> Okay, let's talk about CPF. So CPF is one of my main channel topics, right? So I always advocate CPF. I support CPF. And you see, I have you on the other side talking about CPF on your own channel, which is good, which is good. I always like your CPF videos. But on a more private or personal matter, uh, you yourself do not top up your CPF or mm. consider transferring your ordinary account to special account to build up your special account to full retirement sum. Uh. So how how are you doing it? Because you're not doing what you preach and you don't have money in the game. <laughs> and how are you able to convince your followers that what you're sharing is right for them? Two words. Personal finance, what applies to me may not apply to you. So whenever I speak to the camera, in my mind, right, there's always this guy who's around 25 or so, fresh grad, who doesn't know how to invest, uh, and maybe have a girlfriend or not. Lah. This one I don't know. Lah. Maybe it's just me projecting my, my younger self uh, as the uh, audience. So that's the advice that I will give him. If you are not aiming for fire, you can start topping up to CPF, uh, get the tax breaks or whatever. Lah. So then for myself, right, because I'm aiming for this fire, uh, retire within five years, I can't afford to use my money to top up the CPF. And trust me, I, I did uh, do all the calculations and it felt to me that it wasn't worth it because I knew a bit more stuff like option selling, mm. uh, investing in individual stocks. And my conclusion was that for me, uh, that gave the higher return than CPF. La. And that's why I tell people to top up the CPF. And also I, I, I did not I did not do it in private. I, I made a video to talk about it, why I'm not topping up to CPF. Uh. So, and I gave my reasons. So if you are a person who has, who's on the same path as me, as me then you can use the same formula mm. as, as mine. Ah. So, uh, like not topping up to CPF, reducing your, reducing your expenses, increasing your income. And I think everyone has a different journey, just that my message is more for the general public who is not chasing fire, who wants that safety net. 
wants to have a test breaks. So, <laughs> so that's why, uh, even though I'm not doing it, I, I still think topping up the CPF is a good thing. Lah. So you support topping up CPF? Uh? But I support topping up CPF for people who need it. <laughs> okay. Another topic on my channel is on credit cards. Huh. And I always talk about credit cards, even I covered cashback and mouse credit card. And I know that you yourself are a cashback user based on what I watch on your channel, especially the UOB1 credit card. Okay. And I even did a video on why I'm not using UOB1 credit card. But the thing is, now you are actually branching out to mouse and rewards credit card. Mm -hmm. I see them a lot more often on your channel. Mm -hmm. So similar to the CPF question, if you yourself are not using the mouse and rewards credit card, then are you doing it for the purpose of business or are you genuinely interested in travel hacking? Coming up, coming to steal your market share. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, like my channel says, right, I'm Kelvin Nurse Investing. So the whole purpose of starting cashback card in the start, Actually, there wasn't any purpose. It's just that this, this credit card guy, he reached up to me and said, oh, do you want to sign up to this uh, SMRD card? That's how I entered into mm. this cashback card at the start. If a mouse, uh, mouse bank agent come out to see, oh, do you want to sign up to this mouse card? I would have been in the mouse team already. <laughs> so it wasn't on purpose. So when I used, started using cashback card, I found that it was easy to use. It can save a bit of money, not a lot, a bit like 3%. Uh, and was, I was happy with it. So actually I knew the benefit of a mouse card uh, very early on when I started watching uh, Graham Stephan. He was talking about, about mouse all along uh, and how you can, you can get free flight tickets. But I didn't see the benefit of it because I wasn't traveling so often. I, my, my purpose at the time was just to save money, that's all. So this year, after speaking to Aaron from the Mao Lion, mm. he sort of uh, converted me la, to this mouse guy. <laughs> Enlighten. <coughs> Enlighten you. So this year, I was speaking to quite a few creators like the Mount Lion, uh, the Shutter Whale, the guy uh, who runs the Shutter Whale blog. La. So, and they convinced me to use mouse card because it can give a greater value than cashback. So I think, uh, like what my channel say, I like to explore uh, many different things. For, like, for example, investing strategies, I explored dividend stocks index investing all in into Tesla and now diversification. Mm. Same for mouse. I start to see the benefits of a mouse card. Mm. Um, and because it gives me flight tickets. Not, not because I don't need the savings. I, mean, I still need the savings. It's just that I foresee myself once I achieve this fire thing, right? I will start traveling more often. That's where this whole mouse points come in handy a few years from now. So that's why I am changing myself into a mouse team guy la. Mm. Uh, and also because it's, it's more fun to talk about mouse than cashback la, to be honest <laughs> <laughs> in what way le? mouse is more fun to talk about for example for cashback card ma, ca if I were to stick with cashback card I would still go with UOB1 uh, there's, there's nothing to, much to talk about ma. there's mm. this, there's this uh, you spend this amount you get this 3% cashback uh, that's all but for mouse I think it, there's a lot more things to talk about uh, how to earn the maximum mouse for each category uh, and earning mouse, I realized that earning mouse is actually easier than earning cashback. Right? Yeah. Um, or you, because there's no minimum spend. So that's one thing. Uh, it makes my spending easier nowadays. Right? So yeah, yeah. So the reason I changed the mouse is so that it's aligned with what I want to do in the future. And it's more interesting to talk about. <laughs> okay, cool. But what kind of mouse card are you using? Your mouse card strategy right now? My mouse card strategy. So I got, okay, for this, I have to give all the credit to Mao Ryan because I learned from him. Uh, the first one is HSBC Revolution, which covers online offline spending. So I apply all of this card together. La. HSBC Revolution, oh. uh, UOB pre Preferred Platinum Visa, uh -huh. uh, that DBS Women's World card. Uh. Um, these three for now. I still haven't get the City Rewards card, uh, okay. which I know that My you favorite are using. Card. <laughs> so once I apply for this card, I suddenly realize, eh, I have too many cards. Uh. I, one person cannot use so many cards, uh -huh. right? So I throw one card to my wife. Is it uh, help me use it? Uh, help me to accumulate the points. Okay. So I'm using for myself. I'm using this UOB preferred platinum visa, which gives four miles per dollar for offline online. But I don't really like using it after a while because mm. it's, it it gives miles in terms of five dollars blocks. Oh, five dollar blocks. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I keep missing out <clears throat> on the miles. Uh, so that's why or sometimes I will switch to H, HSBC revolution oh. card. 
uh, long term wise, I think this card is not that good for me. I would rather use the City Rewards Plus Instagram Amaze card, yeah. which doesn't have this five dollar block weird thing going on. Uh. Yes, but I don't know. Instagram Amaze might stop their promotion one day. That's true. <laughs> so I, I let's see for now, lor. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's my strategy. Pretty like. good, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so final question on YouTube and business, right? Because last year you won some very nice YouTube rewards like top 10 creators, oh. breakout creator. Oh. I mean, it's a big honor to have. Uh, oh, like you are on the list with some of the A-list tier content creators. <laughs> so how would you actually rate your current year 2022 mm. performance compared to 2021? And are there any <laughs> breakouts of YouTube that you feel that this year was a good achievement? I think this one, you are experiencing it also. For the finance space, uh, especially Singapore, la, the speed, the growth speed have, has grown down quite a bit. La, yes. Right? And um, yeah, that's my income going down 50% this year. <laughs> <laughs> so even though I grew to 80k, right, I was originally expecting 100k oh. end of this year. I missed my goal by like 20k subs. <laughs> okay, so I feel that my channel has plateaued quite a bit this year. And I suspect it has something to do with me focusing only in the Singapore market. Uh, market. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to like branch out to overseas topics. La. Like talk about Malaysia's EPF versus Singapore CPF. Uh. Uh, something like that. La. Uh, and also exploring other topics. So my strategy going forward is to start exploring also other platforms, not just YouTube. I think you also did that right for you uh, for TikTok, uh, and you are also very heavily on Instagram right now. So that's my strategy next year. So you might be seeing me dancing, <laughs> pointing all these investment strategies for twenty twenty three. I would love to see that. Uh. <laughs> if you love to see that, go and click the like button right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my strategy la. I, I'm plateauing, and I need to move on to other platforms or mm. so try out different things lor. Uh, so yeah. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, even though I'm producing four videos a week, uh, I, I, I feel super tired. Uh. 80, super hours, tired. 80 hours a week is no joke, man. Especially if you're working for three years in a row. So you're averaging 12-13 hours per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, in, I intend to slow down my video production to maybe three videos a week. Uh -huh. Plus short videos though, uh, like TikTok, dance videos, this kind of stuff. Mm. I, I think even for you, do you find it sustainable? Doing three videos a week? For me now, it's okay. Lo. It's okay. I can I can comfortably produce three videos a week with my full-time job um, for now. But you see, I don't have any backup. Like, if I miss one recording, uh, then <laughs> one whole week may be gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is that is the risk, lo, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I would say that for you, it might be easier because you, are, you keep talking about easy stuff, right? CPF, uh, mm. robot advisor, credit cards. And I would say that all these don't really need a lot of research for now. Mm. So you're you just um, focusing more on easy topics for now. That's how you produce the videos. But for me, I'm, I go into very heavy research stuff. Like, you have the market period next year. Uh, then I have to read like five, mm. six hours of articles. So uh, I intend to go slower for, for myself. I can't afford to get so many white hairs. La. And I feel like, I, actually this year, my health has been deteriorating. La. Oh, what happened? <clears throat> you know, like, I feel very tired, uh, this kind of stuff, very uh. moody, this kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I, I need to slow down. You need to take a break. Uh. <laughs> I, I can't afford to take a break. It's just slow down, slow down. Slow down. Uh. Yeah. Three videos a week is good enough. No? Yeah, that's what I feel. La. Okay, with that, we come to the end of the interview. Thank you, Kelvin, for coming on my channel. Yeah. And if you have not subscribed to his channel, go and check out Kelvin's Learns Investing. Yeah. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and do whatever you need to push both our channels <laughs> to our new benchmark. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.